Welcome back everybody, in today's video we're going to talk about Antelius SPF 50 Shock of Fluid Sunscreen by La Roche-Posay. Before we start with the analysis slash review of the sunscreen, let's first get a better understanding of what is it that the sunscreen is protecting us from sun okay so i love the sun i just love it and there are a lot of benefits that we get from the sun for example sun enhances your mood being in the sun makes the people feel better and have more energy and sunlight increases the levels of serotonin in the brain which is associated with improved mood not surprisingly serotonin levels are the highest in the summer then sun relieves stress, also improves sleep, and UVAs from the sun initiate the synthesis of vitamin D. So this is one way that you can get a higher levels of vitamin D. Although be warned that only 15 minutes of the sun exposure is enough to provide you with all vitamin D that you need. And then there are negative effects of the sun. Sunburns are the most widely uh, recognized as one of the most common negative effects of too much sun exposure. In general, symptoms are of sunburn include redness, pain, swelling, blisters, and flu-like symptoms. Then we have wrinkles, and people usually associate wrinkles with aging, but actually sun exposure is a significant factor in their development and how early they appear. Because UV light damages collagen and elastic tissue in the skin, and so it becomes more fragile and it does not spring back into shape, causing sagging of the skin. Then we also have hyperpigmentation, and the last but certain certainly not the least is skin cancer. Now there are different, many different types of rays present in the sunlight, but the rays that are most, most damaging to our skin are called ultraviolet rays. And there are two basic types of ultraviolet rays that reach the earth's surface. Those are UVB and UVA. UVB rays are responsible for producing sunburn and they play the greatest role in causing uh, skin cancer. UVA rays also play a great role in skin cancer formation, but in addition, UVA rays penetrate more deeply into the skin and play a greater role in premature skin aging changes, including wrinkle formation or photo aging. And uh, fun fact, there are approximately 500 times more UVA rays in sunlight than UVB rays. So therefore, in addition to protecting your skin from the effects of UVB rays, it is also very important to protect from the damaging effects of the more numerous UVA rays. And traditional chemical sunscreen products have been more successful at blocking UVB rays than UVA rays. Problem is that there are a lot of UVB filters, but not as many UVA filters. Okay, now let's see. Let's go back to the La Roche-Posay sunscreen. So La Roche-Posay claims that their Antelius SPF 50 shock of fluid is the highest UVA protection achieved on an Antelius product. It's a broad spectrum protection and it shields your skin from UVA and UVB rays and it helps prevent the damage caused by infrared A and pollution. So today I'm going to analyze the ingredients and see if they can back up those claims. Now moving on with more claims, it also says that it is ultra resistant to water, sweat and sand, anti-eye stinging, invisible and lightweight texture for sensitive or sun allergic skin suitable for all skin types. Also, it's non-sticky, non-greasy, we'll see about that. And pay attention to this, there is no uh, there is no claim that it's non-comedogenic. So it's not emphasized that it's a non-comedogenic, so the chances are that it can break you out. So be careful with that, and I will explain later on which ingredients can break you out. Okay, so those are the claims. Now let's take a look at the ingredients. It has six UV filters, out of which two are just UVB filters two are combined UVA and UVB and two are solely UVA filters. Okay, so let's start with UVB filters. First one is ethyl hexyl salicylate. This is not a strong filter itself, but it's used in combination with other sunscreen agents to further enhance the SPF. And it has a really good safety profile and the maximum concentration is 5% in both US and in Europe. So this one is also allowed in US. Then we have ethyl hexyl triazone. This is another UVB filter, although it's not available in US due to FDA regulations, but uh, it's available in Europe. And by the way, I bought this sunscreen in Europe because I live in Europe. And this one gives the highest photo stable absorption of all available UVB filters. Then we have combined UVA and UVB. So first we have Tenosorb S. Okay, so Tenosorb S, this is another, this is a UVA UVB combined filter. And this is one of the best sunscreen agents 
agents known today. It's a broad spectrum and uh, it's a very photo stable and sometimes it's very useful in stabilizing other less stable sunscreen agents like the famous UVA Avobenzin, which is also included in this formulation. Then we have Mexarel XL. This is another UVA UVB filter and this is a L'Oreal exclusive sunscreen agent. So I guess L'Oreal patented it and this can be found only in L'Oreal sunscreen. And La Roche-Posay is owned by L'Oreal. And this is another photo stable chemical sunscreen. Okay, so moving on to UVA filters. Now we have the famous Ava Benzin, which I mentioned earlier. This is a chemical sunscreen that actually provides a proper UVA protection. But the problem is that it's not photo stable and it degrades in sunlight. Uh, this one provides a very good protection across the whole UVA range. Okay, then we have a Mexeril SX. This is another L'Oreal group exclusive agent and this is another UVA filter. Okay, now that would be it regarding the UVA filters and based on the ingredients, we can definitely see that this is a serious product that provides us with significant UVB and more importantly, significant UVA protection. So that's great. And there are a couple of more ingredients that I would like to mention that are not UV filters and those are alcohol and isopropyl meristate. So I'm, I'm mentioning alcohol because I know that some people are going to have a problem with this. I actually, I don't have a problem with alcohol being high up in the ingredients list because alcohol is a great solvent, penetration enhancer, and alcohol actually creates those com cosmetically elegant light formulas. And by the way, um, alcohol evaporates in the first couple of seconds after you apply the product to your skin and it leaves all the other emollient ingredients on your skin to nurture your skin. So it does not mean that it's going to dry out your skin. And so that's why I don't have a problem with alcohol being so high up, but I'm just warning you guys because I know a lot of people care about that. Then the second ingredient that I mentioned is isopropyl meristate. And I'm mentioning this one just because it is highly comedogenic. And this is the ingredient that that might clog your pores if you are prone to that. Okay, so enough with the ingredients. Let's see how this product acts on the skin. Okay, so first you have to shake it before applying it and let's hear the sound that it creates. Yep, that's the sound. And as you can see, it's very liquidy and you don't really have to apply it to your finger fingers first, you can apply it directly to your face right away because of how liquidy and lightweight it is. You can also apply it around the eye area. I tested that out and it's not stinging at all. I had no problems with it. And as you can see, it gives you a very nice uh, glowy finish. It does maybe look like it, it is a greasy overlay, but trust me, it's not because it's so lightweight. You don't have a feeling that you have a greasy overlay on your face. Um, also, foundation looks great on top of it. I think it does make for a great makeup base and it does give me a little bit more glow than what I usually go for. But for me, this is not a problem because I can easily set it with a little bit of face powder. So anyways, here I went ahead and I finished my makeup really quickly and stay tuned because after this, I will be giving you my final verdict, final opinion regarding this sunscreen. Just in case you're new to this channel, let me just introduce myself really quickly. My name is Danny, and I am a pharmacy specialized in cosmetology and that's why I make these fun informative videos in which I analyze ingredients of makeup and cosmetic products, mainly skincare though. So in case you're interested in this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on my future uploads. Thank you so much. Okay, now let's talk about this Antelius Shaka Fluid sunscreen. Is it good or not? Okay, so I would say that everything about this sunscreen is good, like everything from the ingredients to the claims, like everything is good. I love it so far. It's super lightweight, it spreads out easily, and it makes for a great makeup base as well. And even though it's not completely matte, I think this is as close as you can get to a matte finish with a waterproof sunscreen. Also, it can be applied around the eyes, and that's a huge plus for me, because if you watched uh, the video in which I analyzed uh, elasticity filler under eye cream, Eucerin's elasticity filler under eye cream, I will list it right here. You would know that that actually, that under eye cream had also UVA and UVB protection and it was stinging my eyes. With this one, that's not the case. It's perfectly comfortable to apply it around the eye area and I love it because of that. Maybe some of the people will have a problem that it has have uh, alcohol listed high up, like second place in the ingredients list, but I personally don't have a problem with that and I already explained my opinion uh, regarding alcohol in this video right here and 
solvent. Um, I mean, alcohol is a solvent. It creates those elegant formulations, lightweight formulations. It's also a penetration enhancer. Keep in mind that it's not like you're applying just alcohol, like straight to your face, like vodka, not like that. It's not like that. You're applying a small amount of alcohol, and even though it's listed second, it's, it's still a small amount for your face, and that uh, amount evaporates in the next five seconds, and you are left with a lot of emollient, nourishing ingredients on your skin. So because of that, I don't have a problem with alcohol, and unless you are extremely sensitive to alcohol, I don't think you will have a problem with this sunscreen as well. So the only problem that I experienced with the sunscreen was that in the beginning it was giving me a lot of breakouts. If you saw my Dove soap video, I will list it right here, then you you probably already saw my breakouts because I showed you in that video. And by the way, I was doing the double cleansing in everything and I was first using an oil cleanser and then a regular mild liquid send it uh, for dry skin, but apparently they were not doing a good job because I still had breakouts even with the double cleansing but as soon as I started washing my face with Dove soap my breakouts cleared up in like two to three days my face was clear again so be warned that can potentially be a problem and one more disclaimer by the way I am not acne prone and I'm not prone to the clogged pores and this cream still give me breakouts so be warned about that it is important to remove the sunscreen in the evening properly to avoid breakouts and for me Dove soap does a great job so that would be my recommendation for you as well if you want you can try it of soap. The ingredient that is most likely causing the breakouts is isopropyl myristate because that is the ingredient that is actually highly comedogenic. So be warned, it can cause you breakouts even if you are not acne prone. So just make sure that you remove it properly in the evening. Okay, now there you have it. That would be it for this video. If you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!